fuck, guys. What the fuck? Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, and we are looking at a beer. This is the second recording of the beer, so it's already popped and poured. I do apologize for that. Uh, but we are looking at a beer that was sent to me by Steve. Thank you, Steve. For some reason, my phone was recording all my beer reviews onto the uh, internal memory instead of the, like, 64-gigabyte fucking SD card. Why it was doing that, I don't know, because it's always been set on SD card, but whatever. Um, anyway, today we are drinking this beer. This beer is from Granville Island. It's one of their big bottle series, which I'm told by everybody from BC is the beers that are still made small batch at the brewery uh, instead of being made by Molson Coors. This is Coco Loco, which is a chocolate porter with uh, with cardamom and chocolate nibs. Ghanaian chocolate nibs from Ghana. Ghana, Ghana Ian. Choc Coco nibs. 6.5% um, alcohol by volume. There's a picture of me on the bottle. Uh, now, this was a winter seasonal. It was sent to me just in May. Um, Steve had some health issues. He had a whole bunch of beer mails to send out to a bunch of different people. I kept telling him, don't worry about the beer mail. Just get healthy. And he sent the beer mail anyway. Um, I do really appreciate it. Uh, I don't know how this is going to be, since it was a winter seasonal, we'll, we'll find out. And like I said, I do really appreciate the beer, don't don't take what I just said the wrong way, Steve. I just, I care more about your health than the beer. I care more about everybody's health than beer. Beer, beer second, second fiddle to, well, fuck, third or fourth fiddle to that type of stuff. But let's try the beer. Beautiful black beer, beautiful, uh... Mocha head, the head was all the way up to the rim when I poured it, and then the recording stopped and I had to start again. So, uh, here we go. Give it a sniff test. Okay, you know what? I'm actually picking up more of the cardamom than, uh, than chocolate. I'm not actually picking up any chocolate on the nose. And with cocoa nibs, especially from Ghana, I'm surprised I'm not picking up uh, uh, any chocolate because that is a very strong uh, a chocolate f scent. I mean, that I, I, there's a lot of beers that use uh, cocoa nibs from that area of the world that are using some... Why is my dog barking? It's 6 a.m. Yeah, Dave, I, I, I just said it. it's 6 a.m. You can start ranting on me. I'm a, I'm a third shift worker. I got home at 3.30, and I go to bed around 7 on my days off where my wife is home so that I can actually get a full 8 hours of sleep. So this is just me drinking late at night for me, okay? It's not me, oh, I woke up and I'm drinking at the beginning of the day. This is the end of my day. It's the end of my day. There's hundreds of people that have different hours. This is my hours. Let's try the beer. Cheers. Okay, so I had high hopes for this beer. This beer had uh, had so much going for it: uh, cocoa nibs, cardamom, good percentage. It was a porter. It was uh, you know just all these things that I would love. And it's from BC. It usually makes some great beers. Uh, I know that Molson Coors owns the company that makes it, but I mean Molson Coors owns some of the companies that make some great beer still. Amheiser Busch, who I would say is. Uh, Worse in the Cutting Corners uh, venture than Molson Coors. Owns a lot of breweries. Makes some great beer, too. Sleeman's owns... Well, not Sleeman's. Sapporo. Uh, and that's a brewery in China. And we know how they like their cheap labor in uh, Cutting Corners. But uh, they own some breweries that make some amazing beer as well. So I actually had super high hopes for this beer. Um, is the beer bad? Off the first sip, I wouldn't say it's bad. But I'd also say I'm very underwhelmed in it. I'm going to give it a few more sips and see how I feel. But uh, this underwhelming feeling, I don't know if I can push it off. And that's coming from a guy who is very open to beers from anywhere. Yeah, I might make fun of things about the beer no matter who makes it. Uh, I do make fun of a lot of Molson Coors practices, a lot of Anheuser-Busch practices, a lot of Sapporo practices, a lot of Heineken practices. I make fun of a lot of things, even in craft beer. Uh, I make fun of Trafalgar quite often, but I, uh, I quite enjoy a lot of their beers. Um, all that being said, if the beer is good, the beer is good. I mean, 
there are a lot of beers from places like uh, the Rickard, Rickards Red series, not Rickards Red itself, but like the Session Ale and the uh, and the IPA and even just Rickards Rattler that I really do enjoy. So it's not like I'm fully against macro beers. As I said, I make fun of a lot of things from macro beers. I'm saying this while I'm wearing a Coors Light hat. Uh, there's a lot of things I make fun of, but it was a free hat, and I need something to contain this. So yeah, there there's a lot of things I'll make fun of, but I, I mean, if it's a good beer, it's a good beer. Now let's get into this again. Give it another sip. Okay. So, light-bodied, it's a porter, but it's, I dare say it's lighter body than a porter. It's more like a, a dark lager. Um, light-bodied, light-bodied. Um, for something that talks about being Coco Loco, there's not enough chocolate flavor on this. It's not like Chocolate Manifesto, it's not like... Uh, Oh, what was the other chocolate beers that that uh, Flying Monkeys put out when they were starting to use cocoa nibs? Oh man, I can't even think right now. The Bare Naked Ladies one, their Bare Naked Ladies Stout, which was, I believe, the birthplace of Chocolate Manifesto. <laughs> I mean, um, they they had a lot of beers out there with cocoa nibs. There's a lot of other breweries in Ontario that use cocoa nibs. There's a lot of chocolate beers that use cocoa nibs. Heck, there's not even as much chocolate on this beer as in uh, Wells Double Chocolate Stout. Um, so that is a hit on it. There is a fruity flavor on the back end. Is it the cardamom? Is it is it something else? I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't say right off, uh, right from the get go that it's cardamom. It doesn't just it doesn't jump like cardamom does. It doesn't pop on the on the palate. Uh, Finish, uh, maybe maybe a bit of baker's chocolate on the finish, as well. As, uh, see if you if you just sold this to me as a stout, actually not a stout, just as a porter. If you sold this to me just as a porter, as a standard porter, I would say it's one of the better standard porters I've had. It has a lot of dark porter flavors, but to sell it to me as a uh, chocolate cardamom porter, I don't really feel it. I don't see it. 6.5% uh, alcohol, you don't feel the alcohol, but you, you would hope you don't at 6.5. I mean, yeah, a lot of times now we're spoiled by people that can make 12% alcohol beers that taste like 5% alcohol beers. That is a spoil that we don't really need, but it's there. Um, almost minty, to be honest with you. A slight bit of chocolate, almost minty, and then like a caramel molasses uh, undertone that goes all the way to the end where you get that earthy, dirty English flavoring. It's not a bad beer, it's not. It's just, it's a letdown. That's that's the only problem. It's a letdown from what I was hoping for because of the explanation of the beer. Um, I just did that. I just did that. Fuck. Um... Yeah, what can I say about the beer? I, I don't think it's a bad beer. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It's worth a buy. It's worth a drink. It's just not exactly what is advertised, and that's saddening. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Steve, for sending this out. Bye-bye.